What's good, hobby homies? Welcome to This Mini Sucks. Today, we're gonna open up this old ass box of Tomb Kings and get them painted up and looking good. <laughs> So Tomb Kings are a really nostalgic army for me. When I was around, you know, 12 years old, I was probably the first time I went to a comic book shop. After school, I would kind of go there and hang out and play different games. I remember playing Magic the Gathering, pirates <laughs> with these little, like, cardboard pirate ships that you built out of card packs. We were so obsessed with those. Those were actually pretty sweet. Um, and Warhammer. But, you know, we were kids, so we didn't really have a lot of models. We just kind of bought a blister or two a week and you know our armies grew really slowly um, but one day a family friend who was having a kid um, I guess he decided it was time to make some room and maybe get that stuff out of the house and he dropped off a 50 gallon tote filled with boxes sprues painted armies white dwarf issues codexes everything you know as I was going through the tote I stumbled upon a new inbox casket of souls and I was immediately drawn to it. My favorite movie at the time was The Mummy with Brendan Fraser, obviously one of the greatest action performances of our generation. Uh, you know, so I might be a little biased, but I saw that casket and I was like, yo, these Tomb King dudes are dope. So I decided to start an army and uh, they were my first like full Warhammer Fantasy army. I was able to build a bunch of stuff out of that tote to, to go with it. Um, I wish I still had all that stuff. You know, as I went to college, I have no idea where all of my old stuff went. It was like, I guess, lost to the sands of time, as it were. But that's okay. Um, I've slowly begun the journey of reclaiming some of the old Tomb King's army. Um, and that starts kind of with this box. You know, this is still sealed and it feels kind of almost like breaking the seal on a tomb <laughs> to to cut this open. It feels like I shouldn't be doing it, but that's honestly kind of why I wanted to make this video because I was like, if I'm gonna open this sealed awesome box, I should probably film it. Um, even if no one watches it, at least uh, there's a record for posterity. So let's unseal this tomb and see what's inside. Let's do it. Wow. Damn. Hmm. That is some clean looking plastic. Look at that. Um, I don't know what I was expecting. And this is what I love about <clears throat> these old sets is that every piece is, you know, by itself. You've got the head, the arms, the legs, and the torso, and you can kind of pose them and put these together however you want. We got a lot of skeletons to build. And some of these got some, I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, some crazy. That's not a mold line. Look at that guy's head. You feel like a mold fucking mold hawk. <laughs> the fuck is that? Alright. We'll clean that up. No big deal. Kind of funny. There's a couple of those actually. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Alright, here are the horses. You guys look pretty simple to put together. Just two parts each, not bad. Looks like each sprue is one chariot, so here's there's three of them. And bases. Lots of bases. Look at these boys. Looks like you have to clean these little nubs off. As I'm going through this box, I'm definitely thinking about how I'm gonna paint them up. And I think I wanna stick as close to the, um, you know, these old heavy metal reference pictures as possible. I want to go with these, this really clean white and just really bright turquoise and off reds and gold. And I think that'll be really cool. I just really want a classic Tomb Kings aesthetic. 
for the whole army, kind of just to pay tribute to that, you know, old hammer vibe. We're definitely going to be throwing these boys on the square bases that are in this box and hoping that whatever is coming in the old world, these end up being usable. But if not, you know, we can always crack open our old Warhammer Fantasy Battle rule books and get some games in with those because why not? That game is still sweet. All right, now that we've seen everything that was in the box and had that little nice nostalgia hit, uh, you guys didn't get to smell it, but I smelled it. It smelled like the 90s, so that's pretty cool. It literally... Mm, that's a good smell. But now it's time to get these guys assembled. I don't ever do sub-assemblies, but with this, with this project, I kind of thought, you know, the shields are just blue. I kind of wanted to keep the shields off just so I could airbrush them and go through those real quick because I feel like that would take like 10 seconds to just, you know, airbrush all the shields and call it a day. Um, and that way I can keep all the bones separate too so I can really just work very quickly on the bone. Like I said, I really don't ever work in sub-assemblies, but for this project, I think I will. I painted a, a couple full armies in my day. I've never done it all at once in a batch like this. And especially, you know, shooting for YouTube and trying to have a really consistent uh, overall look to this box. I know our process is gonna have to change a little bit. <laughs> we'll see if it's possible to build this box and paint it with a four-year-old jumping on my head. As you can see, I'm um, kind of just, you know, posing, trying to get as many different natural poses as I can um, while, while maintaining uh, the fact that you need to make sure that they can be placed next to each other in their regiment. So you need to keep your uh, weapons kind of vertical and not uh, hanging off in weird, weird directions so that when you're putting them on a movement tray, they don't like fall over and stuff, they fit nicely in. So trying to m keep that in mind, but otherwise just having some fun with the poses and seeing what's just coming out naturally. Here we are building the skeleton horses for the chariots and the riders. We're gonna keep all of the horses separate from their riders and their chariots until they're painted. Same thing with the chariot riders. We're gonna keep them off the chariots until they're painted. So one of the downsides of casting each individual part of the model, like there's literally an entire mold line around each individual part of the model. So cleaning those up is gonna be a pain. So I'm probably really only gonna focus on the ones that can be seen. So after an admittedly half-assed mold line cleanup job, hopefully all the ones you can see are gone. We'll move on to priming. I'm gonna go with a black Vallejo Mecha Primer. This is my favorite airbrush primer. It goes on real smooth, and if you let it cure for a whole day, it hardens up real nice, and it's a great base to start your project from. So after the primer cured, I really wanted to do some experimentation. I don't really usually do test models, but this is a lot of bone. Everything is bone, so I wanna make sure whatever recipe or process I end up going with for the bone that it is efficient but also resembles the box art and looks pretty close to that heavy metal style. I didn't think dry brushing was probably going to be the answer here. It looks like the bones in the box art are a lot smoother. There's, there's not a lot of like dry brush texture to them. They're really nice, slowly layered up over multiple thin coats and you can tell. So I want to replicate that and I'm not gonna just dry brush all these bones. I'm going to paint them all and hopefully achieve something close to the box art. I know I'm not an amazing painter, but this does seem like a relatively simple scheme. So hopefully I can come in the ballpark. We'll see. I tried a bunch of different things. I finally settled on going with another primer over top. The ink just wasn't opaque enough and I was gonna have to do too much work to get it where I wanted. So I ended up going with a Vallejo Ivory Mecha Primer. And I didn't really do a Zenithal, it was more of a base coat. Um, it was applied from above because I did wanna preserve some of the shadows from that black, especially in the eye sockets, in between the teeth and the rib cages. If I could preserve the black lines there, that would save me a lot of time. After the ivory primer cured, I mixed up a wash of one part each Skeleton Horde contrast paint and Reichland flesh shade and two parts medium. Lamian medium? Lamian. Lam lam lamian medium. What is this called? Can you tell me? Lathium medium. Anyway, put that over basically everything. 
Uh, it took a really long time, actually. That was one of the longest steps, washing all that bone. I tried just blasting it on a bunch of the horses with the airbrush, and it basically just tinted everything like sepia, so uh, I actually had to go back in and put the wash in a lot of the crevices to um, build contrast. After the wash dried, I went over everything with Vallejo Bone White, layering up to uh, Dead White. That gave a really crisp and clean look to the bone. It doesn't look bleached like a lot of undead or skeleton armies tend to look. It looks like nice, clean white bone, which is what the box art resembles and a lot of the examples in the codex as well. So I'm really happy with the end result and I'm confident now that once we start adding some other colors, it's really gonna start coming together. So with my bone recipe in hand, I am moving on to base coating the rest of the models. This was not an assembly line. I did not go as efficiently as I thought I would or as people on YouTube make it seem like you can go. I mean, I thought I was gonna sit there and just knock out all the blue and then knock out all the red and then the gold and I was gonna have a finished army in like three days and it was gonna be dope and that did not happen. I would like, bounce around from taking a model all the way to completion, then finishing a couple more base coats on a few other models, maybe then moving on to the bases of a few other models, letting texture paint cure on other models' bases while I worked on other things. It definitely wasn't a straight line, but it was a line that kept me interested and engaged and able to power through most of it. So about like 10% of the way into painting the gold, um, I, I really was not happy with the Vallejo Glorious Gold, I think. It was looking kind of chunky. I decided to bust out some Citadel Retributor armor and actually I was really impressed with it. It looks awesome. It's got a lot of depth to it. It has like a really warm quality. So I decided, you know, this, this gold paint looks really nice. Um, so I headed out to my LGS and I picked up um, a Citadel Gold to layer it up with, uh, the Auric Armor Gold and that went over it really nice. It, it felt like a nice continuation off of it. And for my final highlights, I just added a little bit of white ink to that and put some white dots on the top of different areas where I thought the sunlight would be catching. And I think that really ended up being a nice gold recipe, much better than if I would have went through all of this with the Vallejo gold. I thought I was gonna be able to just stick to painting a few hours in the night after my son and wife went to bed. But that ended up not being the case. It, it took a while to get through all this, man. I, uh, I knocked a couple hours out with my wife watching some TV shows. My son joined me for some paint sessions. He, he got kind of into Gaslands just for one week. He's already out of it. It literally lasted a week, but it was kind of fun to have him work on that while I was doing this project. He had fun going through my bits box and gluing a bunch of shit onto his Hot Wheels. So that was cool. Um, so he was painting that up while I was working on some base coating. He also dumped out my entire red contrast paint. That was awesome. And then uh, I was on my own for the rest of it. And that was fine. I just threw on an audio book or a podcast and got through as much of it as I could. So at the 75% mark of that process, I was here. Um, it was this point where I could see the end. I knew I was gonna finish. You know, big projects like this, they can be overwhelming. And, you know, hopefully um, you finish. And at this point, I was like, okay, there's enough. I finished basically one model of each unit. I know what they're gonna look like when they're all done. So now it's just doing it. I didn't go into this with like a step-by-step -step plan with highlight here, wash this, do that, whatever. I didn't do that for this. And after getting this point, I really needed something that I could visualize and latch onto and kind of just follow through to the end, being able to cross off glue tufts, paint base rim black, terracotta base coat, whatever. It just gave me these nice little micro steps and I actually was able to, for this last unit, work very efficiently and kind of as an assembly line. It was nice to not have to do that for all of them, but it was also nice to be able to power through the last 25% at the end in that way. Okay, so now it's time for final highlights. I'm gonna start with the blue. So coming up from the turquoise, I'm gonna add in some electric blue and then mix that with some dead white for my edge highlights. On the red, coming up from terracotta, I'll mix in a little bit of scarlet red and then finish that off with some bloody red. The golds, like I mentioned before, are Citadel Retributor Armor. 
and then applied a wash of Reikland Flesh Shade. I really love washing gold with Reikland. It's a red-brown wash, which is perfect for gold. I then applied some Arc Armor over top of that and mixed a little bit of white ink in with the Arc Armor for my edge highlighting as well as some final dots of reflective light. So, time to put on the last couple highlights on the rest of the models, chuck them in my kid's sandbox, cue the dramatic music, and see how these dudes all turned out. Our true king will show them we do not serve. We But it's done. And I didn't think I was gonna be able to say that, but I can now, so that's dope. Really happy with how this paint job came out. I know I'm not like an heavy metal painter, obviously, but uh, I definitely think this captures the spirit of their style and definitely the spirit of the box art. And I think they'll be a really great base for my Tomb Kings army as I continue to build it up in anticipation for release of the old world. Um, if you'd like to follow that journey, you can feel free to subscribe down below. I have a lot of ideas for other videos in the future, as well as a bunch of brand new inbox Tomb Kings models that I am really excited to open up and paint on video. So if you wanna let me know in the comments below, if you'd like to see a Screaming Skull catapult next, or my all time favorite model ever, the Casket of Souls. Like I said, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to start that project next. Uh, feel free to like this video if you like Tomb Kings or if you thought it was fun to watch. All that stuff helps. I am brand new and I would love to get the opportunity to create more content for you guys. Um, it's a lot of fun for me. My background is in filmmaking. Um, so I'm more of a filmmaker first and a mini painter second. Um, but I'm hoping to improve my skills over the course of this journey and share it with all of you. So I'm so glad you stopped by and I can't wait to see you on the next one. Yeah.